Welcome to the Schottenstein Center for the Division IV State Semifinal. Pandora Gilboa making their first trip to state. Their highlights brought to you by Sprunger Insurance and facing the Rockets, the Marion Local Flyers. They won the state football title in the fall, looking for state basketball gold here in the winter. Their highlights brought to you by Moeller Trucking. The Rocket Rowdies fired up for their first time at the shop, but it's Marion Local that comes out firing. Tyler Prenger, the three in the first 30 seconds, then Tyler Mesher doing what Mesher does. It's a 5-0 lead. Back come the Rockets, Drew Johnson on his way to Huntington. This three ties it at five. The back and forth begins. Nick Tangeman, the steal, the score, and he's fouled 13-10. Marion Local, but PG ending the quarter on a run. Brees curls to the hoop. 13-12, they're within one. Then Johnson, the runner on the baseline. First Pandora Gilboa lead at state, 14-13. And before the end of the quarter, Brees drives, scoops, and scores. 16-13, PG after one. Start of the second, this is not a replay. Look at Brees using the rim as an extra helper. It's an 8-0 run for the Rockets. They lead by five. Back comes Marion Local, Matt Rethman to measure. Then Rethman, the steal, the score. Flyers back in front, 19 to 18. Then Bruns, two fouls in the first half. Nathan hands to Pranger, who knocks down a triple. Then watch this tip drill that Tangeman finds the hole. It's 26-20, Marion Local back up six. But again, the Rockets with a run in them. Johnson, offensive rebound, cuts the lead to three. And before the half, Josh Breeze beats the buzzer. 29-28, Marion Local up one at the break. Third quarter, Marion Local back to work, runs fast break pass to Mesher, 31-28, Flyers in front. But again, PG hanging in there, Drew Johnson and the foul were tied at 33. Cooper McCullough knocks down a triple, Pandora Gilboa leads 36-33. Then the kick to Riley Larkham and he knocks down the triple, four point advantage for PG, but that Flyer defense bringing them back. Colin Everman, the steal and then the finish on the other end. And then watch this Tangeman take. It's 40 to 39 in favor of the blue and gold. Look at this pass. Bruns just getting started in the second half. He scores and then a block party hosted by the Tangemans. 42-41, Marion Local after three. To the fourth quarter now. Johnson, 24 points. The touch in the lane, they're down one. But more great flyer passing. Rethman, the reverse, it's 46. 46. Breeze squeezing through here. Pandora Gilbo goes in front. 49 to 48. Tyler Mesher at the line for the Flyers. He misses. Bruins the rebound, the score, and the foul. 52 51. Marion Local back in front. Then Bruins, two of his 15 here to put the lead up to three. Breeze trying to quarterback his team back. He finishes with 16, but it's not enough as Marion Local is into the state championship game on Saturday against Cornerstone Christian. Flyers win at 56 54. I would just say what a heck of a high school basketball game that was. I think the fans that came here today got treated to a great game between two Northwest Ohio programs. Uh, I think Pandora is a whale of a basketball team. And that was, uh, it took everything we had to uh, come out on top today. Uh, Nate got some early foul trouble, uh, two fouls in the first two minutes of the game. And so we had to nurse him through the whole rest of the half. Uh, I thought Tyler Mesher was a warrior for us inside in the first half. Kept us in the basketball game. Uh, and then it was kind of back and forth there, uh, third quarter. And then when it came to crunch time, uh, number five over here uh, pretty much took over and, 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 and got us through and, and was a big reason why we won the ball game. Yeah, on offense, you know, I was going to I was gonna keep playing hard. I was going to go after the rebounds. And I ended up getting a couple. But we, we kept talking about our defense. It wasn't about our offense. We needed to get stops and stops and more stops. And, I think our defense won it for us again. We've got seven starters. I mean, any one of those those seven guys could <coughs> easily be in our starting lineup. And actually, they have been earlier in the year. And Colin did a great job handling the basketball. He made some big shots for us. Nick is a, is a great athlete. And uh, you know, you know, in a two point game like that, you need every little bit. And uh, certainly, our bench might have been a little bit of the difference today. Consider myself a leader out on the court. I like. Just boosting everybody up, helping them out, defense and offense. Just let them know what has to be done. Just help them out any way we can. I just saw them driving, and we're always taught to help and recover. And I helped, and I stuck my hand in there, and I poked it out. But then I took it down the floor and missed. But 
It was, yeah, helping recover on defense. Definitely helped at first, um, just calming our nerves. We knew what we had to do coming out from the very beginning. Um, just knew that's just like any other game. You can't just overlook this game, hype it up. I mean, obviously you hype it up a little bit, but it's just a game. You got to play how you play all year. Coaching over 20 years, and when I say one of the best, I mean the best on floor communicator that we have. Uh, he's relentless, always telling guys to show their hands and giving them little verbal reminders. Uh, you know, one of our core values is communication, and he just it doesn't get any better than him. Ty's our best shooter, I think, on the on our team. He just comes out shooting and blazing. Um, he's not afraid to take the shot. He'll shoot if he has it, and he's an excellent shooter. And that big three right to open the game was huge. I don't know. Maybe we overthought a little bit at the beginning of the game. We thought we'd get uh, our little five nine guard up in him. We didn't think he could. Uh, hurt us as much and we thought we could help down when they did post him and he when well, he just made some tough shots early I mean he made some shots from distance and later in the game we just started went back to what we had originally thought which is probably what we should have been doing all along and we just put more length on him and we weren't perfect but we we just said we had to chase over screens we couldn't go under anything because he's an excellent shooter we just didn't want to let him shoot the basketball so I would say that the minor adjustment, we tried a triangle and two in the second half, and that was not a good idea either. But I thought with a one-point lead, we'll at least give it a look. It worked on the first possession. Now we're up three, stay in it. Now it's tied, stay in it one more possession, and it didn't work. And then we got right our, – our, we hang our hat on great solid man-to-man -man half court defense, and so we were going to live and die with that. But I'd say the major adjustment was putting a little bit more length on him in the second half what I would call tournament jitters to start. I mean, it was a good game right from the start. We weren't throwing passes away. They made shots early in the game. We made shots early in the game. Both teams were ready to play. You know, maybe this tournament experience they have in football a little bit, there maybe there's just a little bit belief we're going to find a way to get it done. We're going to find a way to get it done. And, you know, I don't know about Pandora. They haven't been in that position. But, man, they're a fine basketball team. So we're just elated to come out of here. Coach Segerson, I see you sitting in the back there. And uh, you always talked about finally breaking through to Columbus when you get down here. And Tyler Pringer last Friday, that was a big game. And he had 23 points. And you know he's, he's averaging six, seven points a game. But to have 23, and then he hits the two, the two threes to get us going tonight, that was a big reason why we didn't have as many tournament jitters. We did a nice job, yeah. You know, and we, we only put that offense in in the middle of the year because we just needed something different. You know, I think you need to run motion offense uh, by and large, but you need to have a little bit of a continuity offense, which that is, and then maybe a sprinkle in a set here or two just to, to mix it up. And, and we can play all three ways. And in our, that continuity offense, we were able to get some back screens and some easy layups, which got us a lead or at least kept us in the game. Talking to their coach before the game, you know, we said when you come down here, since we're, especially with, since we're from Northwest Ohio together and we've actually played each other in the, uh, the summer, so. You know, you come down here and, and what you want to see is the teams play their best or have a good game. That's what we said and see what happens. And I think what, that's what you saw. Eight lead changes, four ties. I, I think that's one of the better games you're going to see down here. That, that's a heck of a game. They just came out on top. I, I thought they made a couple more plays, mostly rebounding the ball. Uh, they're big, physical, strong players. So the rebounds were huge through the course of that game. This is probably, we pretty much out-rebounded everybody we've played all year. We got almost doubled up tonight. That was the difference in the game. We were blessed just to be here, so and no regrets. You know, we had just had to come out swinging. And you know, we've been on the stage before, too, you know, regional finals of football and basketball. So we've been there. We just had to come out swinging. I felt that's what we did for the most part. Um, my, I couldn't have said better, like Bree said, you know, we've been, you know, we've been, believe it or not, you know, with our record, I mean, 26 and 2 now or something like that. We've been the underdog most of the year. You know, teams saying we can't make out our district, and then teams yeah, heard and that pe all year. people saying that we can't get out of our regional, we can't beat Crestview. You know, coming down here, we even heard that we wouldn't even give a Mac or a Mac team a game like they beat us by 10, 15. You know, so we we're like feeling like the underdogs. Like, why not just come out and play play your game, play with all, play all your heart, all the effort you can give, and just show the state what what we're about. And I'm very proud of these fellows for for you know leave it all on the floor i know it didn't come out the way we wanted it to but you know i i think people walked out of this game saying that you know we're, we're legit we can be legit and you know that's that's no, all that's that's no all regrets, no regrets right? nope, no, no regrets playing with size and, and uh, you know you, you can't simulate that too much in practice you know for the most part we're a fairly long team but that team just went to another level for long you figure you know we start six five six four six three six two which is most times in division four normal teams 
that's fairly good size, especially when you can put six five on the perimeter, and they got to figure out how to guard him with that. You know, that's a hard that's a hard matchup. Uh, just re just physically, they would just move us uh, off the off of our spots. You know, we we started getting up a little bit. We talked to our kids about. Uh, to be able to block them out, you have to stay low or they'll drive you underneath the bucket, and that's what they did. And as we got tired, you could see our body uh, come up instead of down, and that's what, like the first half, I think they out-rebounded us by two, and then the second half was not real close. You know, we're not known for a pl running a lot of plays, but we do have some good ones put in, and we ran Dallas uh, on the sideline, and uh, I think Jared got a layup on that one. And then we come back uh, there. That was called red, red two, wasn't it? Yep. We read red, red two, which is our four across. The first guy slips the screen. The second guy sets the screen, which is Drew. Which is, you know, and they're not leaving Drew, so we thought we could get a good look. Uh, I told Coop after the game, it's not the fact that you missed the shot; it's the fact you had the courage to take the shot. You know, he could have bailed, and he went right up and took it with confidence, and he just happened to miss it. That's ninety percent. I told him that's ninety percent of life right there. Stepping up and taking your chance, and out, out. I'll uh, take that look every single time at the end of a game. Uh, basically, that was the game. He puts that in, we're up one. Now they are, have the pressure of trying to get the ball back. Well, they're just, uh, you know, physically they were so strong. And, uh, that, that made a difference, especially the Mesher kid. He, you know, he's, got, he's a load inside. And we got caught a couple of times not having backside help. You know, we, we you know, you gotta remember, we're still high school kids, and so you can tell them some things, and sometimes it kind of goes right on through, just like the classroom. You know, I've been teaching for a long time, so I know what it's, what it's like. And then you put them under pressure, and sometimes uh, things don't always get conveyed to the court, you know, because their minds are going a thousand miles an hour. Uh, we wanted to let them. Uh, we, our backside help just kept creeping away from it, and they got too many easy looks, which was a was a big problem. We kind of tightened it up a little bit, but like I say, it's it's they're so strong that you know they rode us up the lane. They did everything they're supposed to do, uh, but I wouldn't change it. Uh, I thought we played well enough to win. They just played just a touch better. Well, obviously we, we came down here, and, and I've you know as a coach you got to plan ahead a little bit. So I've watched quite a bit of tape on them already, and and I just know they're an excellent basketball team. Uh, we're going to have to prepare well. You know, we're a team that can play different styles. We can play half court. Uh, we can play up and down a little bit. You know, and, and against a team like that, you're going to have to get back in transition. You're going to have to take care of the basketball. And obviously, with their athletic ability, you're going to have to be able to rebound the basketball. If we do those things, we'll be in the game late. And if we're in the game late, then we got a chance. I ran through all their personnel uh, one of the nights, Tuesday nights, but I purposely did not watch Michael Bothwell till Wednesday morning because I wanted to be able to sleep that night. And uh, he is a load. And we're going to have to figure some things out. I mean, we're going to have to go back into the war room tonight and, and try to – you're not going to totally stop a kid like that. But if we can limit him, we did a good job on Justin Arns this year. We did an okay – much better in the second half on Drew Johnson, although he was still a whale of a player. So, you know. Everybody's human, though, so we know it doesn't matter. At this point, we're going to fight like crazy. We're going to focus on what we need to do, and we're going to go out and have fun. We're going to do those three things. Marion Local's got another state championship game, a date with Cornerstone Christian on Saturday. We'll have highlights and reaction from that one. Thanks once again to Moeller Trucking and Sprunger Insurance for sponsoring our report. From Columbus, Andy Lynch for WSN.